Good morning. Hopefully you can see and hear me. If anyone is watching live, well, you can't see me. That was a complete lie. You can probably see a fox, but you can hear me. Um, if anyone is watching live, can you just give me an indication that the sound and camera is working okay and you can see and hear me all right? Um, <clears throat> welcome. If you're joining us for the first time, um, equally, if you were here two weeks ago with our first one. Hi, Jill. Thank you for saying hello. Hello, girls. Um, yeah, so this is what we did last week, not last week, two weeks ago, we did a little fox um, and I was really blown away with your images that you uploaded afterwards, some amazing foxes and I loved how different they all look were as well, everyone has their own style. I didn't actually get the chance to upload my son's, Michael's, he's actually came out in quite like a cubist style, so it was lovely to, um, to see how one photo, one image can be interpreted lots of different ways. Hi Helen, hi Sophie, oh, I'm with you to can see in here, that's always good to know, <laughs> happy bonus. So today um, I went through all the comments on that original live and then subsequently and we had the most votes for a squirrel, so that's what we're drawing. Hopefully you have got a reference picture. Hi Grace, welcome back. Um, I've been very disorganised this morning and my tablet had no charge on it, so I'm going to be working off my phone today. Now, well, normally I would want a tablet because it's a bigger image and it allows me with my old people eyes to be able to see a bit better. So um, I'm just going to wing it today on my phone and see what happens. Um, but then you might have a printout as well. So <clears throat> whatever, we've, we've got a reference picture. We've got somewhere to start. And we're, I'm going to use exactly the same tools, materials that I used last time. So I'm using, if anyone was interested, um, it's called Nucato paper it's a watercolor paper pad and the only reason i'm using watercolors is because my pencils are watercolor pencils and obviously when i add water on with them after i need to make sure that i'm using an absorbent paper otherwise you get like this rippled effect that um you might not want so i'm um, going to be using those for that again and i will also be using just a standard hgb pencil hope everyone sharpened their pencils i was just frantically doing that um what number colour pencils? Oh, good, good question, Grace. You've got the same. I've worked out we've got exactly the same set, this triple layer. Oh, isn't it lovely? Oh, triple layer pencil set. Um, and the ones I've gone for, obviously black. That's the one I use the most in all my drawing. I've got number 77, yellow ochre. 159, permanent brown. 75, can, cadmium, yellow, deep. Uh, 122, which is the orange. Uh, 116 raw umber. Uh, what is this? 86 magenta. 11 terracotta light. 70 sepia. And 13 terracotta. I have no idea if I'm going to use all these. I've just grabbed them because they look like the sorts of colours that I could see in the photo. It might be they only use the same two or three. So um, it sounds like I'm being all flash <laughs> pulling out these colours. Um, I literally just went by eye and grabbed them. Um, in case I need them. So, uh, Helen's but it's nice joining you live again. It's nice, it's nice being here. It's a nice start to the week doing this. I have been a bit bunged up with cold, so if I'm a bit claggy sounding, apologies for that. Um, and I've, I've got a feeling this isn't going to be my best work today because I'm just feeling a bit run down, but it's good for mental well-being to do this and it's a nice way, calm way of starting the week. Michael's sitting opposite me as well. He's geared up, ready to go. So, should we jump straight in? If anyone wants to chat or say anything, Whilst we're working, then obviously you can. Michael, if you want to comment on Facebook, I'm talking to my son now, sorry. If you want to write anything, you can do. It will show up that Pip Rothwell is typing, but actually it's my son. He's too young to have Facebook because so he's having to work off my profile. So um, we'll get started, shall we? So as before, anyone, and I just, I'm just going to ask, if anyone is, didn't come last time or hasn't seen the live last time, let me know because I don't want to repeat information unnecessarily. Obviously, there's some tips that I said last time that you might not be aware of. So um, this is this is informal. This isn't like a formal fine art lesson. This is a chilled out way because we're all interpreting art, this artwork art, and this image ourselves. And there's no wrong or right way of doing that. I'm just going to show you how I do it and we just draw along. Um, as you may remember, I always start with the eye. Now, with this image, I'm very aware that the eye and the face of the squirrel is right over on the left-hand side. So what I have often do because I don't grid out my page is I'll start on a piece of work and then run out of paper for like to fit the towel on so I'm going to 
make sure I sketch the eye in lightly and then I'm going to roughly sketch the body shapes in just to make sure it does fit on my page because it's very frustrating if you've worked on a piece for 30 minutes and then you go oh no the really important feature is missing um and I've decided on a red squirrel because we don't see them anymore really I, does anyone I don't we don't have them in the wild down here in the south I don't know if anybody else I've seen, a, I've seen one in like a wildlife park in a cage but um obviously our native red squirrel is um very much on the decline. I think it might it might exist up north. Joe, secret squirrel Joe, you should know. Oh, and then obviously I should say this that we are dedicating this draw along to our actual squirrel, Joe, who does our social media, who's said hello as well. Okay, so I'm gonna get started for real this time. So I'm gonna start with his lovely big eye. He's got quite a big round eye. And again, like I said before, this is where you can breathe life into your image, I think, by getting the eye right. So at this point, we're just sketching out the shape. So don't worry too much about details. And then I'm going to go down to his nose, which I put about there. And I think we said that last time we had the picture of the fox we were drawing. It was actually a fox cub. And you notice his eye was bigger, which is what a feature that definitely makes animals look cuter. So the bigger the eye, I think the cuter they look. So I'm just sketching the rough. I already feel like I'm going to run out of room on my page, so we shall see. I might have to start again at some point, which I normally say don't do. But at the very beginning stages, if you've realised that you've made a big mistake and you can't actually fit your piece on, then, yeah, that's a different case. So I'm going to scan out just so I can get a feel. So you see, what, see what I mean? I feel like I've got the, everything's a bit wrong already. You'll see. Oh, Jill, we saw an albino squirrel once. We've seen an albino squirrel when we went camping, didn't we, Michael? There was um, one, a little campsite near us that has a one that comes back every year. We've seen it a couple of times. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. I'm going to see if I can get this. I was I don't want to squeeze the proportions in. I don't want to make the squirrel's body smaller than it actually is in order to get the, it on the page because then it won't look right anyway. But actually... It looks like the body isn't an issue. Can I get the towel in? So I'm going to miss. There is a bit of towel that obviously would be there. The rest of his towel will be there. He'll still have a towel. We'll know what he is from the towel. Just cropped off that last bit. And now that I look at this, I actually think his head looks way too big compared to the rest of his body. So let me adjust that. Oh, how frustrating. I said I wouldn't be on the ball today. And as I said last week, I'll, you know, I will go quiet sometimes because I'm not very good at multitasking and sometimes I have to um, focus on what it is I'm drawing. That's a bit bitter. He's got a walnut in his hand. You could you could remove that if you didn't want to draw a walnut. It doesn't have to have anything in his hand. Or you could draw something else. You could have a flower or something in his hand. Because at the end of the day, this is your artwork. So there, you can make it look however you want it to look. I think that's a bit better. We'll go with that. But yes, a prime example of what I do wrong <laughs> by not gridded out. So if you're if you're doing a formal art lesson, what they would normally do is have a printed picture and a grid drawn all over it, and then you grid up your paper so that you could get the proportions right. And because I skipped that because I thought I just don't like how restricted and rule like that seems. I um been off that idea completely, but the risk is always that I'm not gonna get everything onto the page as I've done here. Just gonna check the messages. Um Joe, thanks for joining us. Michael sometimes have long hair on their ears. Yeah, they sometimes have little tufts on their ears. You can see a little bit here. On some of the other photos that I did look at, they had ri ridiculously long tufts. Um, and Joe has put locally here, you have a specific protected red squirrel walker. And oh, wow. And you can visit and sit and they pop out and see what you're bringing. I believe they're also prominent in Scotland too. Oh, that's cool. Um, looks like a close up version. Was that when it was all wrong and the head was too big? Yeah, let's move on from there. Okay, so I've got the rough outline. It's not perfect, but we're not going for perfection. We're doing this 
for enjoyment. So I'm going to work on the eye like I always do. So I'm going to enlarge as much as I can. I, you know, I need to get my eye test stuff in because I'm now at the point where I'm having to hold it right up to my face to see. Um, so yeah, my contact lenses might need updating. But I can see, and I don't know what everyone else, but there is a ring of brown colour before the black. So we're going to make sure that's included when we shade. But what's really important is getting that highlight, keeping that highlight within the eye because that helps give it some life. So I'm going to go straight in with my colours. I'm just get rid of some of these rough guidelines. Could not confuse me. So I'm going to go with dark brown, which Grace is the permanent brown. And I'm going to start by colouring that. It's just a really thin ring of brown. Before we see his pupil or her, could be a girl. How would you tell? Freya's front legs look a little too long, as in his arms. I haven't, I mean, mine aren't even drawn in. I've got no pause or anything yet. So um, I might join you soon, Freya. <laughs> Don't worry about it. And the claws are going to be, I'm not going to lie, they're going to be difficult to draw. <laughs> they're going to be tricky. It's a bit like hands, drawing hands. They are, I think, because of all the little joints in them. And if you do one slightly wrong, it can um, it can throw it all off. The proportions can look very dodgy. Now that's my start on his eye. And I think a lot of animals and wildlife have this what looks like eyeliner, a nice thick dark lid. Again, I'm going to go put some brown in the lower bit. It looks like it's slightly lighter. How's everyone been, though? Do we have nice weekends? Anyone watching the football? Can't say I was. I did watch I'm a Celebrity last night, though. No, it's on too late for you, Michael, isn't it? As much as you'd have wanted to watch it. I was just relieved somebody didn't win. <laughs> I would not have been a happy bunny. Grace, you feel like your squirrel's body doesn't look right. I do think, I've drawn a squirrel once before, I'll be honest, and I did struggle with it. I, I, I don't know whether it's... The towel throws us a what, but sometimes it is difficult to get the proportions right. And when you really look at it, look—I mean, look at his face, his hands, his claws. You wouldn't have thought they look that long in in real life, but they, yeah, I, it is a tricky one. I'm not going to lie. When people were suggesting squirrel, I thought, uh, <laughs> let's choose something safe. But no, we've gone with it. So um, let's just see how we go, and we can adjust things as we go. I, I'm pretty sure this is not how mine is going to stay. We'll just work on one bit at a time and see what happens. Grace, but um, I was so happy when Jay won last night. Yes, I voted for Jill five times. Um, Michael put drawing, never perfect, but it's fun. I think that is very insightful. I like that, Michael. Very good. Um, Kate, I had a really good weekend. Awesome. What did you get up to, Kate? If you want to share, feel free. Right, I'm going to add some colour now. And this really is about experimentation. Now, really, what I should have is a scrap of paper so I can test things out and but I don't. I just throw it on and then um, try and correct it afterwards. <laughs> right, I'm going to go with terracotta light. And I think that's not orangey enough, so I will add in terracotta. We'll go with that. See what happens. Yeah, that's a bit better. So around the eye, you want to still, it's like the sculpting with the colour and the tone. You want to create different levels. And remember, I said this last time, 80% of the time, look at your reference image. 20% oh, of the time, look at your own page because your brain will trick you. And you'll think, oh yeah, that goes there. And then when you look back at your picture, you go, no, it didn't go there. Hmm. I'm switching to yellow ochre. Is that how you say it? 
And, when, and if you are using watercolor pencils, you can be really sketchy with the way you apply the color because when you use your paintbrush, you can obviously adjust things with the water. Michael said, are any kids doing their Christmas lists yet? I've done mine last weekend at the desk. <laughs> you haven't even got your birthday out of the way yet, Michael. Come on. Uh, Grace, do you ever end up with pencil fingers when drawing holding so many at once? <laughs> pencil fingers, like, they cramp up. Is that what you mean? Because, yes, yes, I do. Um, the eye looks too beady on Fred. I don't know. You say it looks too beady, but when you look at the image, it is a beady eye. So maybe it looks just the right amount of beady. Don't get frustrated by anything. And I say this, I, do, I get frustrated by things all the time. But um, <laughs> we want to enjoy it. So if it doesn't go quite right, that was all part of your plan. You're doing an abstract squirrel. As long as we get enjoyment out of it, that's the main thing. Yeah, I'm seeing much more bright orange on his ears. I'm adding that in. This is cadmium, cadmium, orange middle is what I'm using. And I can see the same sort of tones coming down here on his face as well. So I'm going to use, before I put the pencil down and forget which one it was, add it in now. I said that when I mess up, it's part of my plan. It's all part of the master plan. No one need know. They'll never know. Uh, Jill, I always get frustrated. No, don't get frustrated. It's all part of the process. At the end of the day, we won't get any better by not practicing. So even if your drawing today isn't what you wanted it to be, it's better than the blank piece of paper that you started with. I guarantee that. So yeah, you, you might be able to see what I'm doing. I'm literally, I'm picking out the brightest orange bits whilst I've got this orange in my hand because I am, because I've got so many different tones here. I know what I'll do. I'll put it down and then and not remember which one and then not be able to match it. So and that's why I'm doing it like this. And when I shade, I don't, I don't tend to press really hard. I What I do is build it up in layers. When you press really hard on, when you're coloring in, what happens is, and I will get a piece of paper to demonstrate. So I'm shading up like this, and then just building it up. So hatching. If you color, if you say I want a really bright orange, and you start doing this, you get a really harsh color. It's very difficult to show different tones within. You also get these like white gaps in between as well. Whereas this, you're like, you're building on top of it, building on top of it. And eventually you get the shade that you want, but in a much more clean, professional way. So it's best to build it up in layers, just press harder. Erin's enjoying this. Oh, good. Be nice if you share your work, Erin. If you're feeling brave afterwards, last time. Were you here, Erin? Apologies if you were, and I've forgotten my memory. Again, I blow my age. Um, afterwards. If you want to and you feel comfortable to, you can upload your picture in the comment box and I'll, this evening, when I get a bit of peace and quiet, um, I'll uh, write you some feedback. So. And what I'm also doing, I said this with the fox, you kind of want to shade in the direction that the fur is going as well then that helps to create that texture. Freya asks, can we do an otter one day? Yeah, I like otters. We saw that we went to Wingham again, our, our local wildlife park last week. And they were sunbathing on top of their little otter house. It was very cute. There was a film years ago that I watched where somebody had a pet otter. It had a bit of a tragic ending, but um, I loved it as a kid. 
I can't remember what it was called. Does anyone know? Jill, do you remember it? A, a man that lived and sort of raised this otter. Very cute. Maybe I always thought, oh, I want a pet otter. I don't think that's very practical. But <laughs> Grace, right. So mine looks nothing like yours, but it's okay. It's all good. It is all good. Mine looks nothing like the picture, but I'm still going. You know, it's your own piece of artwork. Don't compare. You just focus on your own journey and then you'll, you'll be well impressed by the end of it like you were last time. So I'm keen to keep these highlights. So here on the top of his head where the sun's hitting, I'm really not going to do much in the way of shading because I want to keep that so that it looks like the sun's shining on him. <gasps> Secrets. Uh, did you read that as well, Michael? James just said, you buy there's an otter experience and you can hold their little hands. Oh my. I never had Dubai as a holiday destination, but I might just add it on there. You can hold their hands. Wow. <laughs> All right, now we're doing for time. Twenty-two minutes. I need to. I need to up my pace a little bit. I think. Just that I know someone I'd love to, who would love to do that. Yeah, me. I would love to do that. <laughs> and you, Michael? Yeah. I'm going to go in with some black on this ear. And also to try and show a bit more form. Make it look more real. Was it Taka the Otter? That sounds familiar. It's like, I want to say it was like a, an 80s film. It was quite old. I remember, like I say, I was very young. I'm going to have to Google it. Okay. Right. I'm going to have to... Get a riddle on a bit because I don't want to miss out on, on being able to show the really important feature, which is his tail. So I'm going to move around his body fairly quickly. Because I can always work into this after, after the live if I wanted to carry on with it. scribbling on my page now trust the process it will come together Hands cramping up. So so out of practice I am. Um. 
Was that nice where you could fall asleep right now? Because you're like repeating the pattern. Is it quite mesmerising? Yeah. Hypnotising you to sleep. I wonder if it would work on Elliot. Oh, Elliot's the four-year-old who's uh, quite energetic. <laughs> Keeps us on his toes, does he, Michael? That's great. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't sit still for long enough. Oh, right. <sighs> Just putting some colours in now, not even looking. Come on, Pip. Focus. A bit too orange. There's definitely quite a lot of brown in his fur through the body. We've got this quite heavy shadow bit there as well, so the black's coming back out. And you could use a dark brown, really, but as you can tell by the length of my pencil, I prefer using the black. Put some darker shades in there, where his elbow ends. Ring of Bright Water was the film. No, that's not that's not ringing a bell, so I think it might be a different one. Was it an older film? Uh, Kate, your school looks really good. Oh, thank you. I beg to differ. But we are always our harshest critics. And I say this, I said this. I'm sure I, apologies again if I repeat myself. But because you get so used to looking at the picture yourself as you're working on it, you see all the flaws. You see where you went wrong and, what, and the bits that you weren't happy with. Whereas when you've shown a finished picture to somebody else, they just see this finished product and go, wow, look at that picture, that really cool picture of a squirrel. And they're not looking for what you're, you've seen as you're working on it. So, yeah, we are always our harshest critics. A little tip, if you are really keen to get it as realistic as possible, if you're working on something and you, can't, and you can see that it's wrong, but you can't work out where it's wrong, show yourself the picture in a mirror. Um, I did know the science behind this once, but that's, you know, I had to make room in my brain for some other useful information at some point. So <laughs> something happens whereby I guess your eyes get used to looking at things a certain way. When you flip it round, you can then see the inaccuracies and what you need to, to do to change it. It's amazing how different an image will look when you when you look at it in a mirror. So when I come to doing the towel, my pencil strokes are going to be much longer to create that sort of wispy effect. So I'm getting ready. This is the bit I've been dreading, to be honest. Anything that's show, showing different textures is obviously a little bit more challenging. But it is what helps to make things look more realistic. And when I say I'm dreading it, it's only because I'm being watched. <laughs> if I was drawing on my own, I'd be enjoying the process. But... Um, it's like, oh, what's it? You're terribly wrong in front of everyone. That's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? But you guys are all right. I know, I know you won't hold it against me. <laughs> so that dark line, on you can just see that must be the actual towel within the fur. I'm just putting that in as well. And then looking at the way that the fur seems to be going. And it is very bright orange up here. And we'll start there, don't know why, don't ask why, <laughs> just because, because I can. And then when I come down here, there's more brown in his towel, and the oranges at the end. Again, I think once I play with this with water, I think it's going to help a lot. Not saying it looks bad, but it will look better. 
got a crampy hand. Okay. And then we've got a big blob of quite strong orange here that I want to show. And now the direction of the fur is going the opposite way. And here it's just going a bit wild and all over the place. A bit like my hair, to be fair. Put some um, crocheted in there as well. Calm it down a bit so it doesn't look too garishly orange. Because he wouldn't, if you could study this squirrel up close, he all his fur would be. All different colours, there'd be different strands of different colours as well. Like our own hair, not every strand will look exactly the same colour. I'll rub out those pencil lines. I don't need them anymore. Brown again in there. I think that needs to come out a bit more towards the squirrel's head. I think I've short changed him with the bushiness of his tail. I'm going to just adjust that. Okay, so did I have a good weekend? I did. Um, wasn't oh no Friday. We had a lovely evening Friday. We went to um the pantomime in Canterbury with our we've got a little home ed group that we go to. Well, I say we, Dad normally takes the boys when I was working, um, and they organised it and it was really funny, wasn't it, Michael? Yeah. We were rolling in stitches, so we did that Friday evening, it was a late evening, and then I worked most of the weekend. <laughs> I was re redesigning our the technology triumphs website which I actually quite enjoyed doing just to make it easier for people to find information and stuff which reminds me actually now that i said that i haven't actually put the details of this slide on there so <laughs> i'll need to go back and do that so that more people can join us you finished michael you jumped ahead did we it's a bit like when you're reading a book Cute. Do you want me to take a photo of it and put it on later? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, you haven't finished though, Michael. What has he forgotten? Grace will know. What you it's not finished until Oh yeah. Sorry. Until what, Michael? Until you sign the name you can pretend. Until you signed it. Otherwise, someone could steal your artwork and sell it for millions of pounds, claiming it to be their own. You don't want that. You want the millions of pounds. <laughs> Not that much. It still doesn't seem right to me about this towel. I think I need some darker tones in there. And again, this is the beauty of doing your own artwork. So. There aren't dark tones on there. What it is is there's a dark background, which then helps the hair to stand out, blah, blah, blah. But I don't want to do the background, so therefore I'm adjusting the image to be what I want it to be, <laughs> so that it suits me. Grace has put something doesn't seem right in the face and I don't know why I'm mine. Have you tried the mirror trick? Have you got a little hand mirror you can put your picture in front of to see if that gives you a clue as to what's going on with it?
and those orangey tones into his little thigh. What's nice is that his back feet are hidden by the grass, so I don't have to draw them. What I tend to do if I get to a complicated part of the picture that I don't want to do, I just sort of fade it out at that point. I realised when I was looking at everybody else's foxes last time that I did something that I specifically pointed out I often forget to do and I forgot to do it on mine <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure everybody else remembered to do it on theirs and anyone, did anyone spot it and it wasn't not signing the picture I did do that what did I not do I should have done and draw in my sister fox And it was only when I realised other people hadn't made that mistake, you guys had remembered to do something, that I realised, oh yeah, I can do that. Hmm. <laughs> the bit I really don't want to do, but I'm going to do it. Okay. Finish his arm first. I'll get the proportions right. A little. Whose idea was it to do a squirrel? Whose fault was this? Grace, put put the date on it. Okay, I don't know. Does it help if I give you? What's missing from my box? <clears throat> Michael, can you tell? Nope. Um, I'm probably going to do the same on this one because I've not yet drawn it in. It's Kate. <laughs> Kate's right there. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> How's yours going? Is it Kate? Is it? Am I? Is it Erin? Sorry, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. My my um memory, like I say, like I said. Michael's still trying to figure out what it is. I missed off the fox. Maybe you just didn't notice. I assumed that you'd notice and thought, oh no, I'm going to put it put it on my drawing. Because everybody else did. It's just me that didn't. I'm gonna. You can tell I'm really delaying the poor issue here. Let's go to the white little belly. Body, body and legs. <laughs> now, I personally didn't draw the body and legs. It was just the head of the fox. That wasn't it. But good guess, Michael. I forgot to do the whiskers. Oh, okay. I had no whiskers on my fox. But I noticed other people would put theirs in. It was just me. Oh, that was a bit harsh. Don't want to do that. Okay. I've put it off long enough. I've got to get to the poor, haven't I? Uh, right. Put it in because it's moved over a bit now. I don't want to do it. Right. I should have chosen a bit of a different reference image that didn't show any of the pores. See his little toe pads even underneath his claws on that side. Yeah, you can you can feel how much I'm concentrating on this now.
Yeah, this is going to plan. Not my best, but they do look like little hands. Okay, we're winning, we're winning. Um, get Grace, I don't think I added whiskers either. Oh, I think you might have done. Yep. Girls think the school is much harder than the fox. I agree. <laughs> Definitely agree. And my squirrel's head is still too big for his body. <laughs> it's totally disproportionate. He's almost like a, an anime character or something. But, you know, maybe that, that was part of my plan. I just thought I'd bring in another, you know, art movement as well. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, That's exactly. It was all part of the plan. No one can tell me otherwise. Mm -hmm. School's a bit harder, but I'm enjoying it. It's a good laugh too, since my second school looks like it has a bunny head. <laughs> We're just creating new animals, aren't we? We're just uh, being creative and imaginative and uh, creating our own world of wildlife. So, I know I asked this last time. What are we going to draw next? Can we avoid anything with little claws like this? It's impossible to create a new colour. You know, I've thought about this in the past. Like, how can we... Like, I overthink things and I'm like, what What I see as orange, is that the same as what somebody else sees as orange? And I don't mean just like, oh, you know, people are, you get people that are colour blind and they see things differently. Because do we see certain colours certain ways because we associate with them with certain things? So the sky is blue. So this is like blue, you know. So I know this is blue because it's the same sort of colour. But what if what I see as blue is actually red? Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop. Um, Grace said, I think we should draw a frog next time. I've never drawn a frog. But I will put it on the list. It would be a good challenge. Obviously, it's a completely different texture. So it would be interesting to see how we create that, give the impression of that. Uh, Jess, but what I really want to know is what everyone is going to name their squirrel. <coughs> <laughs> Secret squirrel, of course. Social media squirrel. Grace, put, think, yes, I think like that too. Yeah, about the colour thing. Uh, it's one of those holes, once you start going down there, though, you're like, oh, <laughs> I need to start with this. Where are we going? Um... My first one started to look like a goat until I coloured it. Also, the next animal could be a cat or a bird or a fish. Because uh, there's any number of things, really. And what, but, but what kind of bird? What kind of fish? You know, because there's all different types as well. I mean, there's no, at the moment, as far as I'm concerned, I'm quite happy to do this every fortnight indefinitely, all the time I've got the time to do it. So eventually we could just work, work through everybody's requests. And you get to draw whatever it is you want to draw. Is the plan. Joe, there's also colours that exist that we never experience because of the spectrum we see in mind blowing. Well, that that falls into the me, the spec you know, the same sort of when you're trying to imagine the size of the universe. You can't do it. Um Still votes frog, so Joe's voting frog as well. Jill's put otter or horse. I quite like otter. But we'll go with the most votes. So what we'll do, like I say, you, you say what you want to do. 
um, put it on the discussion board on the next event as well because it's just easier for me to locate it then and then um, I'll go with the one that's the most popular. I'm using a nice walnut colour for the walnuts. But again, loads of highlights where the sun's shining on the top. I'm not going to put too much focus on the walnut because I want the focus to be on the squirrel. Right, we might slightly go over the hour on this one because I don't really want to rush the paint bit. So just giving you a heads up that, you know, if you've got somewhere to be, um, this will stay up on the Facebook page for you to come and finish it later if you want to. So that's not a problem. What I'm going to do, I don't think I did it so much in the fox, but I'm going to spend a bit of time just adding some dark tones with the black. Again, these might not necessarily be on the photo, but for me, they sharpen up my, my image, my artwork, and um, help me to make it appear more realistic and finished. And obviously I'll do that before I then use the paintbrushes and water. Oh well, I missed those comments. After your live, I drew an admiral butterfly and a frog. Ooh, butterflies are tricky. I've done a couple of those, and those are tricky. You inspire me to draw realism. Thank you for helping us. It's interesting about the colours too. Oh, thank you. I have anfantasia, so I can't imagine anything in my head. Oh wow. Yeah, to be honest, I think I waste so many hours a day doing that that um, <laughs> I probably will lose a section of my week. So do you have to so do you have to draw it down if you can't imagine something, do you have to put it on paper and, and, and draw it? Um Michael Spot should think we should draw an owl, a penguin or a turtle. Turtle could be fun. An owl. I love that. I love owls. What sort of bear owl though? Did I do a snowy owl recently? I've got a vague memory of drawing a snowy owl. I don't know what I've done with it. A snowy owl wouldn't be easy, Michael, because it's white because it's very difficult for them to show it. Mm. Oh, sorry. Um, turtle, I do like the idea of turtle. On our level two cake decorating case, uh, course, there is the, the first tutorial. So you have to do the level one course first. And then the first tutorial is um, sculpting and making a turtle cake. It's pretty cool. Hedwig. Barn, yeah, I like barn owls. I think they're beautiful. We need to look after our barn owls, don't we? Although they're not actually native to here, I think I read. I think they're from Africa. I might be wrong. I need to keep up to date with David Attenborough. I grew up on David Attenborough. I loved watching wildlife programmes. Always wanted to be a vet. Then discovered I was terrified of needles, so, you know, that was never going to happen. Okie dokie. Right, I think I'm ready to go in with the pay the water. You know, it might not overrun that much, to be fair. Now that I've done that. So, just on your using water and a couple of paintbrushes. Grace, but yeah, I do. That's why I love taking photos so I can still pe see, oh. still see people. Yeah. Oh, I see what you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. My Avenal Butterfly wasn't that good, but if you like, I could sum up as a picture of them later along. Yes, please. I'd love to see it. Absolutely. This is my word of the day, I think. Okay. Otter, otter, otter. It's got a few votes now. I used to want to be a vet too, but now it's a geologist exploring volcanoes. Oh, wow. That's a change, isn't it? What's inspired you to do that? That's it. That is cool, isn't it, Michael? Mm. Could you imagine doing something like that for a job? Yeah. Michael's a little bit obsessed with um, precious stones and stuff at the moment, aren't you? 
skin down. If I got one kind of stone, that would be sick. Again, I start with the eye, just taking time with it. Seeing Yellowstone in a movie with my parents. Is that, what is Yellowstone? Is it, I take it, a type of stone? <laughs> just put draw Lumiere from Curly's. Who's Lumiere? So Curly's farm is a farm that the girls and Michael go to. Who's Lumiere, Michael, do you know? Is that one of the owls? Um, yeah. We've got a few owls and like falcons. Oh, falcons we call draw. Yeah, birds are tricky as well. Feathers. Yeah. Are, I drew a pigeon, a racing pigeon recently to someone, and all oh, the feathers were really difficult because you have to really be quite precise with the symmetry on the feathers for it to look right. Whereas fur, you can be a little bit um, more random with it and get away with it. Oh, the Highland cow. Yeah. Oh, he's lovely. I never saw him as a little calf, but yes, that would be a very cool one to do. <gasps> yeah, I could go and get a photo of him, couldn't I? And draw him specifically. Yes, I know. Now I sound really, my geography is sh shocking. Je Le the Yellowstone is a national park with one of the biggest volcanoes in the world. It's interesting to look into. Oh, yes, I do. I now I understand why I, why I recognise it, <laughs> that name from. Dormant, yeah, in the, in America, in the US, yeah. My other half would be terrible. Absolutely disgusted with me for not knowing that. He's into geography. A bit more than me. I'm really not liking how this looks this week. It's all part of the process, Grace. It was still better than that blank piece of paper you started with. And you would have you would have taken something away from this, even if it's that I'm never drawing a squirrel ever again. You know? <laughs> so it's not a complete write off. And it's a nice way to kill an hour. We're hanging out together, having a bit of a chat. Yes, Michael, we must put his hand up. How, <laughs> how do you make it like with the, on the eye when um, you've got the, the white and then you draw around the black? I find that really hard when I do it. So just leaving the white space? Yeah. Yeah. Really so it's just sectioning off a bit and I'll just make sure I don't put any colour in there so that it's got that highlight. Mm. Hard. Probably won't draw a squirrel again. I said that the last time I drew a squirrel and then everybody wanted a squirrel. <laughs> I draw a dolphin. Actually, the dolphins are like one of the first things I used to draw. I was, I was obsessed with dolphins when I was little. And yeah, they were one of the first animals I used to draw over and over again. And when I was at school, because I didn't have the benefit of home editing, Whenever there was a design project or whatever, I always incorporated dolphins into it. You ready to add the water? Now go for it. I've been working on his face. Now when I do this, what I try and do is blend the colours so that it sculpts. So keep looking at your image still because you can sort of see the shape of the skull. And that's what you kind of want to try and recreate rather than just plonking the water on and making it one solid tone try and make you know give yourself darker areas and lighter areas so especially here around his little muzzle bit and around the eyes i'm going to move to a bigger brush his body and again and again i'm still painting in the direction that the fur is Border collie, I was asking for. Black dog is difficult to. Yeah, 
draw. They are, but they're, I'm just saying they're difficult. Jill, are you having a go at painting today? You do it, drawing, or is it just the girls? Is anyone finding the squirrel easier than the fox? Because if you are, you're probably on your own. <laughs> Yeah, the how is the easiest, I'd say, was the easiest bit because you sort of just plonk it down. Don't have to worry about so much about sculpting the shape of the body or anything like that. It's a bit more wild and free. My school's head is huge. I've got the same problem. It's fine. <laughs> the new species of squirrel that obviously not many people have seen. They've got a bigger brain capacity. Therefore, their heads are bigger than the standard squirrel that people are used to seeing. Okay? That's the story. That's what we're sticking to. Okay? My second one is an oval. Yep, that's yep. Bigger brain capacity. That's why new species to be introduced. You haven't seen one yet. Oh no. Well, keep an eye out. We'll find one. I'm gonna move to the smaller paintbrush for his hand because they're obviously a little bit tinier. Hands, claws, really, isn't it? Paws, claws, hands. These bits at the end of his arms. Yeah, quite right. It doesn't matter what other people think. This is, like I say, this was, yeah, we want to get better at our drawings, ultimately. That's not going to happen overnight, and it happens with practicing. But it's more about just enjoying the process and chilling out for an hour. If you really hate your drawing, you never have to look at it again. You can just shut it away in your pad. Don't throw it away, though. Because it's good as well to sort of be able to look back in a year's time and then compare your drawing and see just how far you've come on. And that, that process never ain't, ends. I'm still improving all the time, especially where I spend a bit of time out of practice not drawing and then just pick it up again. The towel. Let me move on to the towel. How long did I practice for? Well, I started drawing when I was about six. <laughs> I'm 38 now, and I'm still practicing. There's no... It's not... You know, there's no... There's no way of finishing. You're always going to keep getting better the more you practice. Or you, you try out new things or new materials. or You just develop your style on. I do think you can go backwards as well. As in, I, I didn't draw anything for about four years. And then when I started drawing again, it was, it was like I'd gone, gone back a couple of years. I had to sort of 
get back into the flow of it. So the more you do it, it's like with anything, if, if anyone plays a musical instrument, obviously the more you do it, the more you practice, the better you're going to get at it. And if you stop for a while, you're not going to forget everything you've done, but it might just take you a little while to warm up again and get back into it when you do pick it up. So it's better to just to keep practicing, do little and often all the time. Nearly finished. I'm not going too much over time either. Another minute or so, I'll be done. So much longer strokes with the brush, just like with the with the pencil on the tail. You want the brush strokes to look like the fur. Thanks, Jay. She put reminders for this week beyond the book club and learn your timetable. Thank you, Joe. I'm rubbish at remembering stuff like this. See, can't my multitask. Um, yeah, so those, those of you that are following our primary provisions page, if you haven't, have a look at it. But we've got more free provisions over there. So Joe is continuing on with um, Monster Donuts by the Beyond the Book Club Club. If you've missed them but you want to partake, then the uh, previous sessions are still up there recorded. So it's a, it's a book club read along. Um, with Joe, nice and relaxed again, and then Darren, and that's on a Tuesday, eleven o'clock, and then on a Thursday, Darren is doing our times tables. So he's been doing a little online course again for free um, at three p.m. And once again, if you've missed any of those, they are on the page. You just have to search through to find the older, older lives. Um, what else? What else do we need to remind people? Uh, just check another message. I used to try drawing paper and drawing pa proper anime, but now I look back and think how far I've come and just feel happy. Although I've used, although I used to have a whole wall in my room covered in drawings. Oh wow, that, I bet that looks impressive. Making your own wallpaper. Um, our little drawing group can be the first to hear about our latest pieces. And they, yeah, because you're the ones that we see on a Monday now. So any any new um, new information, you'll get it before everybody else now. Um, Gemma, thank you, my kids have loved this, but we have to leave. My daughter wants to send a picture of a painting, not sure how to do it. No worries at all, Gemma, thank you for joining us. Um, if you take a photo of your picture and then add it as a comment here, um, even after the event, if you haven't got time now, I'll do it later. And then this evening, I'll sit down and go through the comments and any pictures that are on there, I'll give some feedback as well. Um, just for Emily likes the work club, so does Michael. Grace, I like everything about my squirrel, but the face. Um, <laughs> Don't know what to suggest that. Put a big leaf over it <laughs> to cover it up. <laughs> no, it's it's progress. See you later, Kate. Um, oh, and 12 days of, um, so you're the first guys to know about this. Joe is going to be hosting 12 days of Craftmas. Is that what we're calling it, Joe? Um, so oh, from next Monday, she's going to be running, like she did with Special Interest Week with the Mushrooms. It's all going to be Christmas-based, lots of crafty events, um, fun stuff for you to enjoy if you want to. Createmas, I was wrong, I was wrong. So, I've forgotten the title of it now. But basically, crafty, crafty shenanigans um, that Joe is going to be hosting so that when we go offline for our Christmas break, there are still things going on for you to join in with. Again, with, like, with all of our free provisions, they are open to everyone. So if you know any other home editors that want or might benefit from knowing about this stuff, let them know. You don't have to be a current TT learner or even one that wants to sign up in the future, um, these three provisions really are for anyone. Wait, is this in the events tab? I love crafting. Not yet, but it will be. Um, so I think we're going to be posting some information on it at the end of the week um, on the main Facebook page. And then within the closed groups, we're going to be posting the actual events. As they, well, it's all going to be on the main page, so it's open to everyone. So just just make sure what a lot of people don't do. They like the main page, but they're not following it, so you miss things. 
So if you haven't done it, you just need to make sure that you're following the main Facebook page. Um, this is a sneaky preview announcement, so it's not formally out there yet. We've got bookings just finally to say our bookings for January starters close on Wednesday. Um, so if anyone was thinking about doing an additional course or just a course in general, you need to get in quick to get your booking in. I can't accept late bookings because I basically just can't cope with the admin work it creates if I if people book on late. Um, so if and again, if you know other people that would be of interest to, can you let them know? Because we re we heavily rely on you guys to be our word of mouth and to um, to make recommendations for us. And obviously, the more bookings we get on those paid for courses, the more free provisions like this we can offer as well. So. Um, yeah, just till Wednesday, three o'clock is the last is the cut off date for any bookings for all of our creative craft and the literacy and math courses as well. If anyone wants any more info on that, just get in touch. But that's it. So there's a floral. I'm looking forward to seeing your guys. Not my best work, but it was fun. Um, and it, it's recognisable as a squirrel. That's the main thing. You can see that on a Christmas card, don't we? In a smir snowy scene. Um, can't wait to see the rest of yours. Uh, but I'll leave it there. Thanks for joining us time in a fortnight's time where it's looking more and more like we might be drawing a frog. But um, if you want your say on that and to, to, to sway it another way, they went in the discussion box. Then, see you later. Bye bye.